First Peter chapter 2. Stand with us if you would for the reading of the word of God. Thank you for your giving tonight. Being a blessing uh, to this precious family in our church. Glory to God. I'm glad to be a part of the family of God. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. You should know it by heart. If you don't. I pray that you memorize it. it. says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He named off s- several things there that we are. Somebody didn't know it, but you've been chosen. I mean, there's people up and down your street that has never felt the conviction and the touch of God. But God reached down, laid his hand on your heart and began to tug at your heart. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth. Is there any evidence in the house? Ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Father, we thank you for the word and the privilege to be in your house tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to us as the church. Lord, we want to be your hands. We want to be your feet. We want to go where you'd send us. We want to speak that which you'd have us to say. Touch every heart and every life in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you as you're seated. Many people today are wandering aimlessly in this world that we are living in. Many young people today are being caught up in all kinds of philosophies. Humanistic philosophies. Socialistic philosophies, religious philosophies, but we've been called to stand on the truth of the word of God. The church has been given the resource. Forget about Robert's rules of order. God has given us a standard in which to live by. God has given us the precious word of God, the truth, for ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And he that the Son is set free is free indeed. And so we can know the truth of the Word of God. But we're living in a society that does not want to pertain and listen and take advice from anybody. We're living in a society that does not like to be told what to do. People have trouble with somebody over them. People have somebody... Uh, have trouble with somebody giving them instruction. We're living in a very rebellious age. And just like in the book of Judges where men are doing what is right in their own eyes. And I know the best way to do it. Like the old songwriter wrote, I did it my way. And my way is the best way. The Bible tells us there is a way that seemeth right to man. But the end thereof are the ways of destruction. So I can't do it my way. Turn to your neighbor, you can't do it your way. Now tell them I can't do it my way. Come on, I need somebody to help me tonight. I can't do it my way. I said God made a way for us and he made it by the word of God. And if I'll follow and attain to the word of God, then I can overcome. And God established the church. The church was God's idea. Wasn't man's idea. The church was God's idea. Jesus said, I will build my church. Now there have since that time been all kinds of churches. In our little city right here, there's all kinds of churches. One of the reasons why uh, I am... Uh, just a volunteer instead of still on staff at the hospital is because of the reason, I know this is being recorded, but because of the reason that we sat down with uh, many other religious individuals, it became very ecumenical. It became to the process, sitting there, Brother Tim, 
nudged me, said, look at this fella. His tag was, I mean, we was Pentecostal. We was assembly of God. And uh, his tag was heathen. Heathen. I just got, I got to go ahead and tell you, I don't, in a, in a religious room sitting there talking about how to deal with the sick and the afflicted, I don't know what a heathen has to say about divine healing. They wanted me to do some things and do some things that was uh, bound by other people's traditions. Got upset because we wouldn't do certain. I said, hey, you'll have to call somebody else to do that because what I stand on is the word of God. And the truth has gotten away. The church has gotten away from the foundation on which it was established. But there is a remnant. I said, there is a remnant. Somebody told me just today, these the, the folks that sit right here on the back row behind where Brother Lane is, drove over from Mansfield. Told me they've been in the Dallas area for nine years. Said, we've looked all over the place. I'm not here to throw stones. Said, we found you on the website. We was looking for somebody that could sing, somebody that could pray, and somebody that would preach the word of God. Y'all ain't helping me. There's folks drive two and a half hours every Sunday to get to a place where there's liberty of worship, where there's liberty, the power and the moving of the Holy Ghost, where there's no clock on the wall that tells you at 11.11, 11.11, 11.09, we're going to sing this part, and 11.15, we're going to do this, because here we believe in being orchestrated by the power of the Holy Ghost and letting the Spirit of the Lord take his liberty. The church was established by the power of the Holy Ghost. The church was originated. Jesus said, I'm going to leave. I'm leaving here. I'm going to leave. I'm going to pray the Father, and he's going to send the comforter, and ye shall do greater things than what I've done. And this same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwell in you, it's going to quicken your mortal body. Now, I know we talk about that as far as being for the resurrection, but I have a tendency to believe that's for right now. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it's going to quicken you. You're going to be able to be the church. You're going to be able to be the hand of God extended. We've been called the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. That is what the church is. The church is not the social club. The church is not uh, the club of the elks or, or the club of the camels or the Masonic Lodge. Or, we didn't come here for a fellowship. We didn't just come in here to sit down to see who was here or this is a little class of friends. But the church is to whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. But I got to understand that if I'm going to come in to the house of God, I'm going to have to turn away from some things in this world. I'm going to have to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, because the church is called the ecclesia. It's the called out ones. And the problem with the church world in which we're living in right now, by and large, as a whole, is we want to take the name of Christianity. We want to sing about the sweet by and by, but we don't want to deal with the nasty now and now, and we want a little bit bit of this and we want to bring it all in together. You can have all of that. Take this whole world. Just give me Jesus. I am interested in the same old time Pentecostal power that resonated in the book of Acts chapter 2 and I believe that if we will get to the place where we will consecrate ourselves that God will do great and mighty things just as he did because Hebrews said he's the same yesterday today and forever and God is looking for some people that he can trust that he will call the church his family the called out ones see there's the tendency in this world I've had it I've heard it brother you need to change the world is changing so the church needs to change well hear me 
hear me. The Lord said, I'm God and I change not. His word, still the same. He's not going to go against his word. Somebody told me they was in a place one time and there's a message in tongues and an interpretation. And the interpretation gave them the liberty to go out and commit the sin they was talking about getting involved in. I said, because through the message of tongues, God told them it's okay. I said, that was a false message. How do you know that? Because every message in tongues ought to line up with the word of God. Every message, every message across this pulpit ought to line up with the word of God. If it don't line up with the word of God, then we need to throw it out the door. Because it's not about your opinion. Everybody's got opinions. They're like noses. Everybody's got one. And they, some of them don't mind blowing it around on somebody. It's not your opinion that matters. It's what thus saith the Lord. I must live my life according to the word of God. Now methods change. Hear me. Methods change, but principles never change. The truths of the word of God are still the same as they was, as when I was a young man, as when my father was a young man, the truth of the word and sin is still sin today. It still separates us from God. And God said, I'm going to establish the church and I'm going to call the church out. The Old Testament was a picture of that which is to come. I think I've told you before, but I love our name, Tabernacle. I wasn't around when that name was chosen, but I love that name because in the Old Testament, God said, build me a tabernacle in the book of Exodus that I may dwell among them. Because in the tabernacle, in the middle of the wilderness, God would come down and his glory would descend and they would know that God was in their midst. I'm telling you, if we've ever had a day where we need the tabernacle, not just in name only, but if we've ever needed the church, and the presence of God to arise. It's this day and this hour in which we're living in. You've been called out. I said you've been called out. You've been handpicked by God. You've been chosen. You've been set aside for the year 2019 to consecrate yourself to the Lord. God wants to minister through the church in a greater way than ever before. And the enemy's fighting with everything he can, trying to destroy trying to hinder. It's not just about you. You get over your little thoughts for yourself right now. I'm telling you, there's a bigger project in mind. God has established the church and he wants to empower you in the church. Glory to God. Glory to God. What is the church? Number one, the church is God's agency for evangelizing the world. What's our purpose? I have people call all the time. Well, what does your church have for me? I say, we've got a chair. And then we'll give you a space at the altar. And then if you stay around long enough, you come down, you just let me know. Somebody will lay hands on you. That's what we've got for you. I love it. Because we live in a society is what, what, what are you going to do for me? And see, the whole cycle takes care of itself when you come and say, Lord, here I am. I present myself to you. What can I do, Lord? I know I'm not worth much, but anything I've got, everything I've got, I give it to you. And then the Lord begins to minister to us. We are an evangelizing agency. We are to be light in a dark world. We are to be salt. That's a preservative. Sister Amy told me a story about the Romans. The soldiers would get paid in salt. And if they didn't work, 
or if they was lackadaisical or lazy, they would say he is not worth his salt because he is falsely advertising that he is working when really he's just sitting in the corner. I knew a guy, I don't want to go too deep into it, but he worked at one of our universities here in town. There's nobody that's in the building tonight. But he got fired. When I went to him and talked to him about why he got fired, he merely mouthed around. Finally, I told him, I said, well, I know so-and-so who's a boss out there. I'll check with him. He said, no, don't check with him. I was going into a little room, and I had a cot in there, and I was taking a nap. He wasn't worth his salt. I'd have fired him myself. I'd have fired him probably weeks ago, but praise God, we'll move on from that. We are an agency of evangelizing the world. Most of us has been fed spiritually enough. It's time for us to take, oh, we're going we're gonna to evangelize. We're going we're gonna to support landmark missions. We're going we're gonna to support, man, didn't Brother Presley do good? Man, wasn't that awesome? Man, I loved, I loved it when he was standing up here talking about that brother that came up, knocked on the door, and here he was. He was a, he was a mud man, you know, and, and he, this is exactly what he needed. And God sent that man, and he sits there, and he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he was talking to him, and his name has run through my mind twice, and I can't grab it yet. Does anybody remember what his name was? Oh, great. We had a bunch of great listeners. Brother Doug Presley was here, and he was talking about the, the man. And, and you remember the story? Huh? Deaf. No. De- Detlef. 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 And Detlef, Detlef came, and he, and, he, and he knocked on the door, and he came. Oh, that's what we do. We just support Brother Presley. Woo, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're evangelizing missions. I'll go where you want me to go. Here's 20. Put that in there. Send that to Brother Martin to go help the American Indians on the reservation. Go to Walmart. Run over somebody with our cart because we're in such a hurry. Our neighbor right across the street knows we leave on Sundays, but he don't know where we're going. We are to be an evangelizing agency. When was the last time you prayed for somebody outside of church? If you haven't, say, I'm going to do that this week. We're the church. Brother, I've got a bunch of problems. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you the best way to get over your problems, get busy working for Jesus. But we're just kind of, we're, you know, we're really just up against it. I, I, a man, uh, Lontel, you know, Lontel's been bringing people. And I'll tell you, Lontel will tell you, he's got problems. But he's found something. That he couldn't find anywhere else. Erica, keep bringing people. We are an evangelizing agency. I said, we are an evangelizing agency. I talked to a man that works at a place. I'm not going to name his name. I'll tell you where he works. He works at Peterbilt. I talked to a man. He's not here either tonight. I talked to a man. The man he's going to talk about here in just a moment. You'll know what I'm talking about. I talked to a man. I was witnessing to him, talking to him. I said, where do you go to work? He said, I work at Peterbilt. I said, you do? I said, I know somebody that works out there. And this, this man had worked there for over, over about 38, 40 years. So it wasn't Dallas and it wasn't Dwayne. It wasn't Jerry Silva. Okay? They ain't worked there. They're not even, well, Dwayne's 42, but I don't, no, I'm kidding. He, he's not even 38. So he it said, it's not these, uh, not these guys, but he said, hey, here you are, here. I said, oh, he worked there. And I said, he's been there for 38 years. And he goes to our church. He did at that time. He said, he's a Christian. Just because you come to church on Sunday. We are the church. We are the ecclesia. We have been called out. 
We don't just come to church. Well, I need a, I tell you what, ring, ring. I need the pastor. I'm really sick. And he hadn't visited me in like two or three weeks now. He hadn't called me or he hadn't texted. And, and I'm just really wore out and distressed. I don't think I'm going to find me another place. It's not about you. It's about you getting involved in the program of God. And God has called us to be an evangelizing agency to the world. Go ye. Oh, that's for the preachers. No, that's for you. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's nursing homes. There's retirement centers. There's hospitals. There's people. I walked through the hospital the other day in the birthing area. I went in there to pray with an individual that had lost a baby. And I thought as I was walking up and down those halls, as I was seeing probably 12, 14 babies born a day, what a prime opportunity for somebody to walk in there with a little gift and say, hey, we're here. We thank God for you. Is there something we could just, we just want, we just want to bless the Lord and I wish I could do something. You can do something. Get busy evangelizing the world. Well, God's not called me to Germany or Vanuatu. He's called you right here. We're God's agency for evangelizing the world. Number two, we're a corporate body where we worship God. We are a body. 51 times the scripture uses the terms one another. We are members one of another. Well, I don't know that I really fit into the body. You're part of the body. You've been saved. You are vital to the body. I've told you the story, but I'm going to tell you again. Had a blue fish tank. Had some guppies. Had a beta fish in there. He was very mean. And somebody's phone's ringing. I was walking through there trying to, and it had wrought iron deals that stick out on it. It was like a 25 gallon tank. And I was barefoot, and my little toe, when I went by that piece of wrought iron, my, my little toe said, Gotcha. And it reached out there and it grabbed it. And when it hit it and I caught it, it just. And my little toe, believe it or not, well, it's maybe that long. This little. It's just a little toe. Oh, it's just a little toe. You know what I did? I walked out. We have a lot of camping equipment. I walked out and I just got the hatchet. I said, it's just a little toe. <laughs> yeah, right. My brain. Yeah, I have one of those. My brain. Both hands. Every muscle in my body. My eyes. My mouth. Everything gave attention to the little toe. I sat in on the couch. I straightened it up. I prayed for my little toe. I thank God for my little toe. I went and got an ice cream bar and I ate it and I broke the stick in half and taped it to the outside of my little toe to keep my toes straight. Why? Because the little toe is important. Y'all ain't hearing me. We are a corporate body in unity. Every single one of you is important. And the enemy will tell you that you're not important. But I come to tell you that it's the whole body that's joined together. Hallelujah. And one of the reasons, I'm not trying to pick on Amy, but one of the reasons she's worried about Judah is because when you, she takes him in for his checkup, they say, oh, he's great. He's doing good. But he is way down here in his little chart. You know, most kids his age are about way up here. 
and they look like his papa. They're big old fat guys. And, and so they're looking at him, and he's just going to be a little man. He's just a little. And so she's worried, and so she's trying to feed him. Why? Because she wants his body. Yeah, y'all ain't hearing me. She wants his body to grow. And the church body, the church body is supposed to grow. If it just sits in the same old state, then it's becoming stagnant. And it's if we're either going forward or we're going backward in this thing. We are in the moving of God. And if we are not progressing forward, then we are digressing backward. That's why we must move forward. That's why we're gaining ground. We're an evangelizing body. We're reaching those that are lost because we truly believe that there is a literal heaven and we believe that there is a literal hell and that we have a responsibility as the church to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying. And so we are a corporate body that comes together to worship the Lord in unity and in harmony and in peace. And that is so important that when people walk into this place, I have walked in a house before where the mom and the dad, the husband and the wife, when I stepped up, said, well, hello, pastor, come in. And I walked in, but you could sense the it's a thick in there. You had to get a boat oar out to beat your way over to the kitchen. They might have been smiling. They might have been saying everything's fine, but the, the tension... When people come into the house of the Lord, it, this is a corporate body, a place of worship where we gather together to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And when we begin to magnify the King, when we begin to exalt that name which is above every name, I'm telling you as we begin to praises go up, I'm telling you that worship and, and the sin as a sweet smelling savor, as a sacrifice of praise before the Lord, the presence of God begins to descend. I had folks tell me just today, I had folks tell me last week, we have never been in a service like that in our life. I said, I want to tell you something. That wasn't nothing compared to what we've had. But I'm telling you, there's a world that's hungry and they're looking for a church. They're looking for a place where the Spirit of the Lord is. We're a corporate body. Where we worship God. So if you got all against your brother, come to the altar and pray through. Somebody asked me last night. I don't know why I'm going here, but here we go. How do I forgive somebody when they don't even know they've offended me? I said, forgiveness is a choice that you make. Forgiveness has nothing to do whether they forgive you or know they forgave you. They did something that was wrong that offended you, but I said this, and I felt like this was good stuff right here. This was from the Lord. I know when it's from the Lord. I said, the moment you forgive, you take away the control that they have over you. The moment you forgive, they no longer have any kind of control over your life, over your mind. You don't sit around and worry about it. I forgive them. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's got to send to the right hand of the Father. He's got mansions to build. He's got prayers to intercede for. He's going to sit down at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. He's going to complete the work. He's not here to bring vengeance. A corporate body where we can worship God in unity, harmony, and peace. Faith. Faith. Thirdly and finally, we are a channel of God's purpose to build a body of saints being perfected in the image of His Son. We are a channel of God's purpose. God has a purpose. Why do I need the church? 
Why do I come to church? Saint? She ain't no saint. Let me tell you, sister, you don't know where she was just a few days ago. She's very saintly. Perfecting. Perfecting. Ain't nobody in here that is perfect. We're striving for perfection. Now you hear me. If I keep dealing with the same old thing, I need to get that thing prayed through. I don't have to come back to the altar every week and ask the Lord to forgive me because I just keep falling. There is a remedy. You are whom you yield yourself to. We are the servants of the king. We yield ourselves to him. Hallelujah. And I am a channel. When I go into Walmarts, the presence of God is supposed to flow through me. When I go into, I said Walmarts, S, put an S on it. It reminds me of Sister Sanders. She put S's on everything, Targets. Walmarts, Kroger's, <laughs> Safeways, Walmarts, wherever you go, you are to be a channel. I walk through Dillard's. I was going to the Clarence rack. Me and Clarence are good friends. Bless you. While I was headed there, fellow, I thought I knew him, but he, he stepped up and he kind of looked at me, and I just looked at him and I smiled. He kind of nodded, and I stepped off, and he was looking back at me. He said, "Do you know me?" I said, "I'm not not real sure, but I'd like to." And his next question was, what are you smiling about? I knew, I knew he was in a conversation right then. I said, sir, I'm sorry. I, I pastor a church here in town, and I, I preach a lot of funerals for people. And he starts apologizing. I love it when they start apologizing. I love it because you just keep on pouring it on. I said, I didn't know if I'd preached them. Well, I did have some family die over such other place. I said, well, I'm not sure if I did that or not. But I said, the reason why I'm smiling is I love the Lord. And he's given me hope. And, and so I used to know the Lord. My mom was standing in line the other day at the Department of Transportation uh, County tax office where you wait to get your vehicle written you know where they just they bring you right in five minutes you're out <laughs> she was standing in line folks would get up there and they didn't have the right documentation they turn around they're stomping out one guy was mad he was hollering he come back through there and he looked at my mother and my mother just kind of smiled at him and he stopped and looked at her and said well, at least there's one Christian in here. <laughs> Walked out the door. We're a channel. We're a channel. It's been a while, and I pray the Lord will do it again. I was walking through the hospital before and people have just stopped me. Said, you're a man of God. I sense it. We've got a need right down the hall. Would you come down here and pray? One, one, other, one other time I was in a department store. And I was standing there and an elder man looked at me and he said, you wouldn't happen to be a preacher, would you? We're a channel. 
of God's purpose to build a body of saints being, 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 being perfected in the image of his son. We're not perfect, but we're striving for that. Keep on going in the right direction. I told somebody the other day, it's kind of like this graph. I may go up here, I may take four steps back, and I may trick, but you get back up, hallelujah, and you keep going on the upward way. We're striving consecration. Here. Why? The church has separated itself unto the Lord. Brother Jerry Don, they know you. Those workers know what you stand for. They know who you are. They know where you're at. They know you, Sister Wanda. They know, hallelujah, we're to be a channel. A channel. Sanctified, growing. I'm afraid sometimes we plateau. Can I be honest with you? Come and help me, Pastor Tim. When was the last time you felt the Lord draw you closer than you've ever been? Do you have more of him right now than you've ever had? See, I can be riding down the road and Sister Snow say, you know what? I'm hungry. Maybe we've been working at the church all day. Now for y'all, that just means she's hungry. But for me, that means she wants to go to on the border. Her favorite place. Can I get a little cup of queso? And if Sister Ellie's there, she's going to bring out all that other stuff. That, by the way, only Sister Snow eats. The green jello or whatever. The pico picayo or but she loves it. And that's her favorite place. You know why I know that? It's not just because I've been married to her for so so long, but it's the longer we're married. The other day I was riding down the road and I said, you know something? I said, you know where I'd like to go to eat? She said, you'd like to go to Denton County, Independent Hamburger. How, do, how, do, how does she know that? And I said, no, I don't. You do too. I can tell by the way you're acting. We're on this side of town. Denton County's over there. Because the longer you're with some, and the closer that you get, the more you begin to feel what And so when you're walking through the store, all of a sudden you feel the heart of God. That's not your natural heart. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of God that's drawing you. And you're becoming a channel and He's, he's working through you into the image of His Son. And some of you used to go to Fifth City over some things, but God and His goodness and His grace has been... And some of you couldn't have made it if some of the things that's happened to you would have happened a few years ago. Come on now. But God's been working. And the church is a place... That's why it's important when we gather together in the house of the Lord. I know I mentioned Brother Marsh this morning, but when Brother Marsh almost cut his foot off, his heel, he was a good man. But I'm going to tell you right now, he's a much better man. 
and what the enemy meant to destroy him with almost a year off work with, God has turned that all around. But it's through the process. But when I get into the house of the Lord, I need to get in a place where God's people, where the body of Christ is going to help me. They're going to pray with me. They're going to worship. And the saints are going to begin to magnify. There's times I've come in. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. I, I talked to the pastor. He said this was okay. There's times that the, the preacher, Brother Snow, has come in. And he's sat down and he's been overwhelmed. And he's been worried about who wasn't here. And all of a sudden, as you begin to magnify the Lord. And as you begin to worship. And a pounding headache. And all of a sudden, I found myself with my hands raised up toward heaven. And tears running down my face. Because there's something that happens when I gather together in the church house, when I gather together with the people of God, there's something that takes place in here that doesn't take place anywhere else in this world. And that's why God established the church. And let me tell you this before we come to the altar. There's something he's coming back for. He's not coming back for some old, some old hanky-tanky, honky-tonk out there. He's coming back for the church. I said he's coming back again for the church. Hallelujah. And I want to be a vital part. Stand with me tonight. When was the last time you felt conviction? When was the last time the Lord tugged at your heart and said, I want you to, I want you to get rid of that right there. That, that, that's not pleasing to me. Well, it used to be okay, but God said, I'm, I'm bringing you to another level. I, I want you to consecrate yourself. I, I want you to come on up here. Come on. You've been called out into His marvelous light. Father, I pray that you'd help us tonight in this altar. I pray that you'd minister to every man, woman, boy, and girl. Help us to realize that we have been set here for a purpose. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Would you come gather with me in this altar tonight? All across this place, come. Church rise from the ashes.